won't be too loud in the background. Let me go ahead and, hold on. See, I got my little monkey suit on. I'm gonna walk in there and talk to these people. Over the last few days, there's been serious drama on the real AIX. Real drama. People say that this is a fake. I'm, you know, faking the whole entire incident to get even with YouTube, whatever. The documents I got in this manila folder don't say shit about YouTube taking care of me. YouTube taking me to the next level. YouTube don't give a fuck about the real AIX. YouTube will not send no shyster lawyer into the courtroom to decipher all this bullshit. YouTube is a television network seen over the internet with reality shows created by real people in real time. The only people that actually make money off this gem, YouTube, are those people who want to reproduce Hollywood style shows simply for the art of entertainment and no with no educational value at all. When you see real people's trials and tribulations, you learn from the mistakes in which they've made or the mistakes that they display to you. And in my world and in my lifetime, I only base everything on reality. What I mean by reality is the reality of common sense. If someone is threatening you, do you just say, hey, don't threaten me? Or do you scream bloody murder so everybody know you're being threatened? Do you man up when you're challenged by someone that is smaller than you or whatever? How do you carry yourself in any given situation? Defines your life and how you live in this world. The decision I made today to go tell these people I will not follow their rules for this supervised OR is only going to give them one option and one opportunity. And their only option will be to rearrest me. And their only opportunity is to throw out whatever little kind of deal that was not in my best favor in the first place. To instill fear. This whole thing is a revenue tool. If someone broke the law on Friday, Friday, let's say Friday, January 1st, 2009, should they have to pay for that law they broke? No matter how minor it is, if you kill somebody, you're gone, in my book. You run over somebody in your car and hurt them, you're gone. You treat some child wrong, you're gone. You shoot an unarmed man, you're gone. But that's reality. On these TV shows, the star gets shot, throws a band-aid on it, fuck it, he's all good. But in reality, you get shot, you feel hurt, and in some cases, you die. So every choice that you make in life is a life or death choice. When you have your other family members involved in that life or death situation, you have to make the call or they make the call any way you put it when it comes down to how people carry themselves in a stressful moment or stressful space in time only that one person's desires can get them to the other side or if you don't give a damn about yourself you just say do it we don't live forever we can't have it all these are things that we were taught. But one thing I learned off this YouTube is when somebody says they're your friend, it's not like in real life. In real life, I go bowling with my boys or go kicking it with my boys. I would say go have a drink with my boys, but what I say can and will be used against me. Jay Ryder didn't have to offer me any help. London, Canada didn't have to hook me up with some knowledge. 
Helen back didn't have to stay on me to stay straight ahead. Father Judgment didn't have to call me worried about me and my family. You know, it goes on and on. You know, the boss Francis Coppola, he didn't have to he wasn't he didn't have to worry about me. The people that I've met on this YouTube have been there for me. And throughout life, I remember when I first got married. You know, this wonderful time of my life. Beautiful wife, everything happened and and she used to constantly tell me, I love you, 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 I love you. And the biggest mistake I ever made is I looked at her in her face and I said, you don't have to tell me you love me because I can feel it. And some shit went down and, you know, things, you know, hit the bumpy patch of the road. And I wasn't getting that every day. But I could still feel it. And I still feel it to this day. And now we just say it more like we used to. But for that little period of time, when I didn't hear that every day, I changed. I withdrew. What's wrong? See, you must word your wishes correctly. And I'll never ever tell somebody never to tell me that they don't love me no more. J. Ryder, Sergeant Willie P., even old soul in black, all of you out there, you have shown me love. And a handful of you, damn near 85% of you, told me you love me. And you know how I know it's real? Because I can feel it. Through all these wires and circuits, through all these video screens, I feel the love I get from the people out there. And the people say, well, how come every time you're feeling bad or whatever, you quitting? You're getting out of here. You're not going to be on YouTube no more. It's because of all the things we do, from the Tom Kennedy, even the crazy son of a bitch Jim Riley. Because when this is, I got something for his ass. All these people have told me, got some love for you, brother. And I feel, even though Jim comes out here and talks all this shit, Jim got love for AIX. But I'm going to kick Jim's ass. Jim knows it. I'm going to get him. But that's how we do it. We're the greatest dysfunctional family on the planet Earth. And we allow ourselves to be enslaved. Not just by the laws around us and the people who control our every move. Here on YouTube, we do hundreds and thousands of videos teaching people to have compassion, love, and respect for one another. And none of these videos get an opportunity to be featured, seen, or even heard of. I was saying something the other day where I did a video 11 months ago and it had 27 hits that is physically impossible when you have 600 viewers so we're out here trying to push a message and nobody's listening so for those who are not listening this is the real AIX telling I love those who love me I appreciate those who helped me. And there's one guy out there who's like a son to me. Helen Back. And this is one guy right here. I love that man like my own family. If I had enough to give to him, he would, wouldn't even have to ask for it. Because that's what a real friend would do. So those who are there for me, I'd like to thank you one last time. And I do love every one of you. And I appreciate the time that you've given me to speak to you. So as I go tell these people I'm not going to jump through their hoops. I just want you all to believe and know.